I will tell you why. I will tell you why uh, most people with great intention, they want to do the right thing for themselves, for the planet, for animals, why they err when they become vegetarians or vegans. <clears throat> they go for non-starchy green, red, yellow, and purple vegetables like kale and lettuce and broccoli and cauliflower. And they sit down to these foods, well-intentioned, getting lots of nutrients, and they can't get full. They're hungry. They say, this isn't working for me. Of course it's not working for you. You can't live on these non-starchy green, yellow, orange, and red vegetables. They're OK as side dishes. Uh, broccoli and kale are bitter for a reason. And they're not intended to be your, your central food. They work fine as side dishes. You pick up a few vitamins and minerals and get some color and interest. That's all fine. Maybe there's some anti-cancer substances in these uh, cruciferous vegetables. Fine. They cannot serve as your source of calories. They're just not enough. You'd have to eat 11 pounds of kale and 13 pounds of cabbage. And, you know, you just don't have room for all that uh, non-starchy stuff. You, know, you can do the same filling with uh, uh, about four pounds of potatoes. You've got to have that starch. Okay, so they, that's the, the, one of the bigger mistakes that people who are going for a better diet make. They just don't understand it. They can't believe potatoes aren't fattening or rice isn't fattening. You just have to get over that. Well, now they're starving on these non-starchy green and yellow vegetables. Celery, lettuce. I mean, they're starving. They say, this isn't working. So they're looking for calories. And what do they find? Nuts, seeds, avocados. And now, whoa, those are so easy to get and tasty, put a little salt on. Now they start eating and try and fill their appetite. Boy, do they fill their appetite and then some. And then what happens is you have what I call fat vegans. No offense intended. I mean, vegans are people who have shown extraordinary effort and energy you know, to find all this uh, healthy food, to uh, stand up to the world for animal rights, to save the planet. Industrious people. They're also willing to risk their life, so to speak. They'll say, I don't care if I go protein or calcium deficient by not eating the traditional meat and dairy. They say that. They're willing to risk that, even though there's no risk. They're willing to do that. So vegans are you know, great people. It's just, unfortunately, too many of them don't know what, where to get their calories. And so they go for the non-starchy green oil vegetables and starve for a while, and then they go for the nuts, seeds, and avocados, and healthy vegetable oils, and then they get fat and greasy. And so you have fat, greasy vegans trying to save the world. Nobody listens. They look at you and they go, OK, you don't want me to eat animals. You want me to be kind to animals. That sounds good. And you don't want me to destroy the earth with uh, all the greenhouse gases produced by livestock. But they may not say it, but they're thinking, but excuse me, look at you. You look so fat and unhealthy. So you see, I would like to, I, I think those, uh, those issues are extremely important, animal rights and the environment. And I would like to help those uh, industrious uh, messengers out there who are, uh, who are impairing their message by not understanding that they're starch eaters. And if they eat the starch and minimize the nuts and have a few green and all vegetables, they'll do good. You know, one, one other way that I convince I convince people that they should eat a good diet is I talk to them not only just about their personal appearance. You know, starch eaters are always thin. You think of Asians. You think of people in the Middle East. You think of the Mayans and Aztecs. Think of the old Hawaiian people who lived on uh, taro and breadfruit. Not a fat one among them. And they don't have greasy skin and acne, but strength. Oh, you want to convince people to change their diet, you tell them, if you eat a starch-based diet, you will be the strongest, most athletic, best performing person on planet Earth. At least you have that one variable you can change. You know, you need a little inherent inheritance, and you need uh, also some, uh, a lot of uh, attention, and endurance, and practice, and so on. But one thing you can change is your food. Let me give you a couple of examples of starch eaters. Uh, 1,800 years ago, there were gladiators in the part of the world we call Turkey today. And uh, their, their grave was found uh, a few years back of 60 gladiators. And they 
analyzed these gladiators, gladiators, they looked at their bones, and by looking at the bone, you can tell what the uh, uh, long-term diet of a person was. And so they analyzed the bones of these 60 gladiators. I mean, these are really tough men who really wanted to win because, because if you lost, you didn't get to go back again. And, and they did, by the way, they did find trident holes in some of the skulls. Well, when they analyzed the skulls, what they found was their diet was a diet of barley, which fits in with the historical accounts of gladiators. Gladiators are known as the barley men. So why would gladiators live on barley and a few beans? They wanted to win. You know, I see all these men and women going to these athletic clubs, pumping iron, trying to be macho, strong, tough. Hey, look at the gladiators. You know, that, that, the strongest, most enduring people on planet Earth. Let me give you another example. Uh, we've had several marathons recently, and the Honolulu Marathon was won by a Kenyan, and the Boston Marathon was won by a Kenyan. And if you look back to 1968, at the uh, long endurance uh, uh, running and other events, you'll find that they are dominated by people from Kenya, Africa, and from Ethiopia. The events, the winning, the, and their diet is 80% corn. They're starch eaters. Amazing feats of, uh, of athletic performance. Now, you think every child or every macho athlete would want to know this, or the Tamari Indians from Northwest Mexico. Another great example, they're known as the running Indians. They used to play it, maybe they still do, they used to play a, a football race. They'd kick a ball around, they'd kick it for 200 miles, take them a couple days. And they lived on corn. They run for like 12 hours a day. They're so famous for their running. And their diet is starch. All winning endurance athletes live on starch. That means rice, corn, potatoes, beans, peas, lentils. Uh, the losers, they're in the, the ones in the back of the pack are the ones eating the meat and the dairy and the other grease. So, you know, that's how I'd convince somebody to eat starch. You look your best, you feel your best, you function your best. And myself as a doctor, I mean, that's how I heal people. Of I don't heal them, they heal themselves. I stop poisoning them with the meat, that means uh, beef and chicken and pork and fish and crab and lobster, they're being poisoned. Americans, Europeans are being poisoned by these animal foods. And the other large category of poison is vegetable oil, like olive oil and corn oil, safflower oil, all these oils. And they're being poisoned. They get heart disease and obesity and breast cancer and rheumatoid arthritis and horrible bowel problems and everything like that. I take care of hundreds of these people myself as a doctor. I'm a doctor. And I, what all I do is I just take away the food poison. So I take away, <laughs> this is the thing that really gets them, I take away all their meat and all their dairy and all their oil, and they look at me, they go, Dr. McDougall, I got nothing to eat. There's nothing for me to eat at all, nothing. And I say, yes, there is. And then I, I show them the key, which A, you have to know, or you will fail. I show them the starch. I say, well, do you like potatoes? Oh, I love potatoes, but I'm not supposed to eat potatoes. Why not? Well, you know, they go, give me the whole bit about how potatoes are fattening or they're white or whatever. And they forget the fact that uh, you know, tens of millions of people are alive today because of the potato. Uh, you know, the story of the Irish, uh, stories of people in the Andes. I mean, that's all they had was potatoes. So uh, I point out the potato, and they say, oh, that's OK, you know, especially since I put a, some good stuff over the top. And I point out a big dish of pasta or a bean burrito. Oh. Yeah, I can eat bean burritos all day long, and uh, oatmeal and pancakes, yeah, that's good. And uh, uh, pizza without cheese, oh yeah, I can eat all that, and soups like bean soup, pea soup, lentil soup, tomato soup, onion soup. Uh, I love all those things. Well, of course you love those things. Those are your foods, and they're starch-based, and that's all you have to eat, and, and that's how you get your health back, and saves an awful lot of animals, and in my opinion, in my opinion, and in fact, it's not just my opinion, I know this for sure. The most important controllable, controllable factor we have as human beings on planet Earth to save planet Earth from global warming is our food. It's our food. Yes, we need to all be driving around in electric cars. And uh, you know, we need to properly insulate our homes and get solar panels. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to take two, three, four decades. When you realize half, more than half, of the global warming gases are produced by livestock production, 
And uh, most areas of erosion and pollution throughout the world, destruction of the planet, are due to the livestock industry. When you realize this, you go, well, you know, that's my food. I can change that. And then lots of people start realizing. Say a whole bunch of people started realizing it, like maybe uh, uh, Prime Minister Modi, who's over here visiting right now from India, Prime Minister India. Maybe that man, maybe Mr. Putin from Russia, uh, and maybe Mr. Obama, and maybe a whole bunch of other really important voices got up on their megaphones and said, ladies and gentlemen, maybe Pope Francis, maybe him. You know, they just got up and they said, ladies and gentlemen, we're on the, everybody knows we're on the brink of destruction. They said, well, we got lots of things we have to do, but today, like, like in an hour, in this afternoon, we can change the major, you and I, you and, you and the other seven billion people of us on the planet, we can change the world in an hour just with a start solution. We just all stop eating the chickens and the cows and the poor fish, which are hardly left, and we start eating the, the food of human beings. We start eating starch. We now have an abundance of food. People no longer have to starve. And we've stopped these, this horrible factory farming. And we uh, drop pollution and global warming gases overnight. We can do that. And that's why people need to know about starch. Starch has to be the most important word on everybody's mind. 